Hi there, welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMario, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. Tonight is episode 236 with my, in my Live with the Paper Pixie Wednesday evenings. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. If you're watching on replay, drop hashtag replay in the comments so we can say hello to you after the live stream. And if you are new here, pop new into the comments so we can say hello to you. So welcome Charlene, Kimberly, Debbie, Fiona, Elizabeth, hi Jan, hi Linda. I love how you all connect in the comments as well as you find out that you live close to each other. Hi Gail, Belinda, Carol, hello Bud and Joe, hi Debbie, having fun playing with paper is here. Hi Terry, Marlene, hi Jill, welcome. Cheryl, Anel, Anel, welcome, you are new here. Welcome to the Paper Pixie. Hi Linda, hi Kelly, Karen, Kimberly, Kathy. Oh, you guys are rolling on in. Thank you so much for joining me live. Tonight we're gonna to be using the Cactus Cuties Bundle. I'm excited to share that with you. I have a couple of things to share with you ahead of time, then we'll jump into tonight's projects. You know, I've got some show and tell from the kids to show you as well. Brian, are you ready? <laughs> My husband Brian is watching for your questions and comments. If you'll do us a favor and put Q colon in front of your questions, we're gonna save your questions till the end of tonight's live stream and we'll answer those rapid fire for you. Any question, it doesn't have to be about tonight's projects. I'm gonna show you a really quick, oh, let's go back, one more thing. I'm gonna show you a quick sneak peek of what we're making tonight. This is gonna be a gift box. And then we've got a fun fold card. Now I shared a similar card to this on my blog today, just using a different stamp set. So that's what we're making tonight in one of my favorite purples, Fresh Freesia. Let's see, let's go to um, the month of April. I have three free gift choices. If you use my host code for the month, the easiest way to have your, the host code auto magically applied is to use my shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. These are the three choices you can choose with orders of $50 or more with me this month. If your order is $150 or more, don't use the host code, but you'll still get to pick a free gift from me. Let's see. The Last Chance products promotion is still running through May 2nd. Lots of fantastic retiring products. Many of them are discounted from 20 to 50% off. So make sure you get things before they're gone. Most of the items that have sold out so far are stamps and bundles. I know there's some ink refills as well. I saw a punch go on the discount, discontinued list and then back off the discontinued list. So keep your eye on the online store. That's the best place to see if the, the items on your wish list that are retiring are still available. I have opened up my product shares for the new 2022 to 2023 annual catalog. I've got two options, well technically three options, but I do a paper share and a ribbon share and you can get both if you like, that comes with a free gift. And to sign up for that, you just wanna visit thepaperpixie.com slash shares. This is a great way to get a sampling of all of the papers or all of the ribbons or both in the new catalog. Now these are the new papers and the new ribbons. So to the extent that there are papers carrying over, those are not included in my shares. And the sign-up deadline for that is May 1st, which is sort of coming up. It's like the month of April is disappearing very quickly. So that's product shares. I also offer In Color Club, which is a fun opportunity to get all of the In Color products. These are our five new In Colors. The print, this is what my printer decided the colors look like, but they're not totally accurate. Sweet Sorbet, Parakeet Party, Tahitian Tide, Starry Sky, and Orchid Oasis. And In Color Club is like a five month club where you get all the In Color products for a particular In Color each month. The sign up deadline for that as well is May 1st. So you have, if you have any questions, let me know. But at thepaperpixie.com slash In Color Club, you can see all the details. But as always, reach out with questions. My Stampin' Blends labels, I have updated these to include the new in-color Stampin' Blends. We do have Stampin', Stampin Blends combo packs for all five of the new incoming in-colors. And you can purchase my digital download at thepaperpixie.com slash blends. If you've already purchased it, you do have access to the updated file. You should have received an email, but I have understood that not everybody got that updated email. So if, you were expect, if you've ordered them and you don't have the updated file, 
reach out to me and let me know and I can look into it and make sure we get you squared away. If you did keep that original order complete email when you purchased, that link should still take you to the updated blends. Your $8 purchase gives you updates for the life of Stampin' Bled. So as long as they are a current product, you will get updates as new colors are added. But believe it or not, there are 60 colors represented on this digital download. Um, Maria, you must be asking about, sorry, Brian just showed me your question. I'm assuming that was for the um, product shares. Maria, I will double check and let you know, okay? So tomorrow, Stampin' Up! is offering a flash sale, free shipping on orders of $75 or more tomorrow only. So if you're watching this on replay, that is Thursday, April 21st from 12 a.m. Mountain Time to 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time. That's where Stampin' Up! is headquartered, so, so keep, keep an eye on the mountain time, time zone. And that is, again, free shipping on orders of $75 or more. What you, what's a really great, great deal tomorrow is if you are a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, I highly recommend you invest in either the six-month prepaid subscription or the 12-month prepaid, prepaid subscription because normally when you buy the prepaid, additional shipping is tacked on, but grab it tomorrow while it's free shipping. You'll save some extra money to kind of maximize your value there. Um, but lots of other things. If you want to get the stamp and cut and emboss machine, um, I had a couple of ideas for my customers in my email this week of things. If you wanted to get um, a, a color family of ink pads, now we can't purchase them as the bundled amount, but with free shipping, it's still a great deal. Um, so there's just a couple of ideas there, but yes, free shipping tomorrow. Great time to grab things from the last chance sale as well. So don't miss out on that because Stampin' Up! doesn't give us free shipping very often. So I always try to take advantage of it while I can. Um, all right, so if you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like complimentary copies of our current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. Um, I do have the new annual catalogs in the house. So when you place a catalog request, that would be the catalog that, that you'll receive is the new upcoming annual catalog that comes out on May 3rd. Now, those of you that requested, my customers that requested the annual catalog, those are starting to arrive in mailboxes. So I hope you are enjoying the pages full of inspiration. Show and tell from the kiddos. So I've got kits to show you. The kids and I did kits this weekend. So Nolan did the Robot Buddies kit. This is a part of the Stampin' Up! Kits collection. It's not the Paper Pumpkin subscription, but if you have young boys or young grandsons, this is a really, really cute set. So um, Nolan didn't realize that there was a stamp set that said, let's be friends. So he was asking his sister Lily if how to spell let's, he left the B out, but let's be friends. But it's really cute. It's got stickers in the kit as well as stamps. Another one, let's be friends. Let's be friend is what this one says. But how cute is that? And it's a really cute kind of robot builder set. Comes with little googly eyes. And you can turn them into boys or girls with a bow tie or a hair tie. Super cute. Um, but it's just a really, really fun set. So we've got a couple of, I'm just going to show you them all really quickly. He was very proud of his very first kit. Now Lily gets the paper pumpkin. Uh, I As soon as that comes in from the mailbox, she grabs it and creates with it. She usually can't wait to open that box. So I've got the April paper pumpkin. I think this is the April one that just came. The embellishments that came in that kit were so gorgeous. These almost like pearl pebble type things, but really, really cute, fun cards here. Every day is a new day. So she's done a couple of those. I think it was three each of three designs, which I am a sucker for stars. So I'm gonna flip through these really quick. A cool fun fold here. I'm so proud of who you've become. May this new season hold wonderful new experiences. Lily's so cute. She comes in. She doesn't even mess with the stampin' spots that come in the kit. She just comes right to my ink pads behind me and grabs the full ink pad when she needs it and the stampin' scrub and you name it. So um, lots of fun. Oh, these are upside down. This was a really cute set. I love the black backgrounds on these. So fun. So there we go. That's the kids show and tell tonight. Why don't we go ahead and jump into tonight's projects. We are going to start with the card. Let's do that one first. Then we'll do the box. Um, inside the box, while well, I'm showing you right here just to give you a heads up so you hang on, 
is the, I'm calling it the extra 35 sticks or the extra 35 gum pack. Um, this is, I will talk about it in a few minutes when, or when we do this project, but this is a really great pick me up gift to give to a crafter because once you've finished all the gum or if you're like me, you'd pull all the gum out and get, use that. Um, the case is a really good storage case for so many different things. Um, it's great for storing our adhesive backed embellishments, all kinds of fun stuff. I know that some of you have those containers in your craft room already holding some supplies for you. So there is that. All right, so we're gonna do just a simple gatefold card today. This is a really fun one because the gatefold itself is just a little bit off center, which I kind of love it being a little cattywampus, and then you can kind of play around with where you put the sen sentiment and things. So we're gonna start with a piece of fresh freesia. Now what I did for these, as, as if you've been here before, I always create at least two cards because I try to create two card bases from a full sheet of eight and a half by 11. So imagine that this were a full sheet of eight and a half by 11 and I have scored it at three inches and eight and a half inches. Now, if you're using the Stampin' Trimmer and you wanna score and then rotate it and score again, you could do three inches, rotate it, and then two and a half. So you wanna do that along the long side. So your 11 inch side, again, three inches, and eight and a half, I think I may have said five and a half. So three inches or eight and a half, or you can do three inches, rotate two and a half, and then you're gonna cut your full piece at the four and a quarter inch mark, which is the halfway mark along the eight and a half inch side. Then you'll have two card bases scored and ready to go for this gatefold. So I'm just gonna grab a bone folder and we're gonna fold and burnish on our score lines. And it all depends on um, the cardstock, sometimes our cardstock is just slightly varies in size. So you may not have your gatefold completely match up. You may not be perfect with your score lines, but that's completely fine. And that is how easy that card base is for this gatefold. I've got two more pieces. I've got a piece of basic white and this measures three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And if you cut this strategically out of an eight and a half by 11, you can get six of the basic white. So I would cut three and a quarter inch strips along the 11 inch side and then cut it at four and a quarter. You can get six out of that. And then I've got another piece that is three inches by four inches. Great to have this piece out of designer series paper. Tonight I wanted to give it a little bit of texture, um, but you can get with a 12 by 12, if you do three by four inch designer series paper pieces, you can get 12 pieces out of 12 by 12 with no waste. We're gonna run this piece through our stamp and cut emboss machine and the tasteful textiles embossing folder. I think that's what it's called. Tasteful textile, not plural. This one is retiring. So if you like it, grab it. Last I checked on the inventory status report, it is still available. Now this is a 3D embossing folder. So with the stamp and cut and emboss machine, we're gonna do plate number one. Then we're gonna do, this is our 3D embossing folder, tasteful textile. I'm gonna go ahead and put my cardstock right there in the middle. Then we're gonna put this with the fold going into the machine or I, the spine. And then we're gonna take plate number four. So all you need is plate one and four with our 3D embossing folders. And we're gonna run that through. I'm gonna go back and forth just to make sure we get some great texture. If you wanted a lot of texture, you could spritz your cardstock ahead of time and that'll really give it some texture. Let's show you what that looks like. I love this pattern. I'm sad that this is retiring because it's such a great texture pattern. All right, so I'm gonna layer this piece. Let me grab one more piece here. Yes, so the basic white is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. This is the panel that's gonna go on the front. Then I've got a panel that's gonna go on the inside. Now that looks way too big. <laughs> I think that was my scrap piece to do the cactus, but the inside piece is four inches by five and a quarter. And we're just gonna adhere that on the inside. 
I love to use multi-purpose liquid glue, so that's what we're gonna use tonight. Gives me a little bit of wiggle room and it's super economical. $4 per bottle and I can make a boatload of cards with it. So we'll adhere that on the inside. Ooh, Cindy, that is a good question. I can't wait to answer that one. <laughs> All right, so I've got that. Then I'm gonna layer these two pieces together. I absolutely love kind of mixing things up and doing white on the back and then a color on the front because it really makes that color pop. Now, since this is textured, I'm gonna put a little bit more adhesive. So not just the perimeter here. I hope everyone had a wonderful Easter weekend. To those of you that celebrate, we had a good one. It was a good weekend, relaxing. All right, so we've got those two layered together. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put adhesive, but just on half of the back. Now you're safe doing half because you're gonna have your wider section here on the left and half is gonna mean that you're not gonna go over too far so then I'm just gonna go ahead and center that. Again, liquid glue here is our friend because we can just slide things into place. Trying to get that centered there. Whoops. I got too excited there. There we go. So then that really makes this gatefold look cool when you add that panel on the front, okay? Now let's do a little bit of stamping. I'm gonna show you a little tip here with the sentiment, sometimes with the photopolymer sets, or at least I experience this sometimes, I'll get a little bit, uh, my stamped image, especially if it's a pretty solid image, doesn't necessarily get, um, it's a little, not bubbly, but it all depends if my ink pad's really juicy. So I'm just gonna show you a trick with the Stamparatus. Get my goodies here. I probably should show you the bundle we're using. This is Cactus Cuties. You can get it bundled with the Cactus Builder Punch, which is super cute. Now this is a little bit of a different punch, the way that the punch lines up with the stamps Im images. So I'm gonna show you how awesome it is because it's really foolproof to use. We're also gonna be using the Layering Circles dies for the box tonight. And then I'm laughing, beautiful shapes. Some of you noticed this the last time I used the beautiful shapes dies. My dies were actually missing the triangles and the diamonds. So I got a replacement from Stampin' Up, but um, I don't know where my other folder is. It's a hot mess here in my craft room, so I will find it eventually. All right, so. missing pieces so we're just gonna cut them really quickly I know I made a whole bunch of these but we're gonna make a little strip of basic white and you can actually get well if you're strategic you can get 29 of these pieces out of a sheet of eight and a half by 11 but if you don't want to do all that thinking for the 29 you can still get 28 so I'm gonna on the short side cut this to four and a quarter, and then I'm just gonna cut a three quarter inch piece. So it's gonna be three quarters by four and a quarter. And you can actually get 14 of them out of this one strip and then 14 down the other strip for 28. Again, if you really need that extra one, there is a way to cut it. I have talked about the die cut app, D-Y-C-U-T. Um, there is some mixed confusion whether or not it's available for Android or not. I've heard both. I'm not quite sure. I'm an iPhone person. But it's a way, great way you can plug in the size of your starting piece and then what your measurements are. And it'll tell you how many pieces you can get out of the piece of paper and then how you need to cut it. So D-Y-C-U-T. All right. So I, because this is a tiny piece, I'm actually gonna be using my grid paper here. This is the small grid paper, paper that works with the Stamparatus. This would be another great thing to add to your order tomorrow if you don't already have it and add something else for about $25 or $26, I guess, to get it to that 75 for free shipping. I am lining up this strip here right at the one inch mark and I lined up my stamp set. I guess we're up, let's see, we're down, like in one inch, down two inches. And then I'm gonna grab Fresh Freesia, 
and then we're gonna go ahead and stamp our sentiment here. Now this is just in case our uh, stamped image isn't perfectly full or complete. I like using the Stamparatus for this. I can kind of see some bubbles in the ink and that's just because my Fresh Freesia is really juicy. So I like to put my thumb here where the magnet is so that I can, without that paper moving, I can kind of get this because it's photopolymer. It's gonna stick to my cardstock a little bit. So you saw how that released from the paper. That makes sure that that piece of paper stays put. So you can see it's a little bit bubbly there. Let me pull that up just so you can see that. And this happens sometimes with photopolymer and it's just because of the, the way that the ink kind of reacts with that photopolymer. So we're just gonna ink it up one more time to give us a solid image here. Just a little trick for you, or tip I should say. And that gives us a much more solid image. I love that phrase, hope your day is on point. All right, now we're gonna have some fun and build some cutie cactuses, some cactus cuties. This was probably my scrap paper for that. All right, so the colors we're using tonight, we're doing soft succulent, crumb cake, and then we just used fresh freesia for the sentiment. Let's do our cacti. That's the plural form of cactus, right? We're gonna do, I'm actually gonna do two of these because we're gonna use one of them on the box. So soft succulent, I'm trying to be a little bit strategic on where I'm um, stamping so that we can get the best out of our punches here. Let's see, let's do, I'm gonna do this one upside down. I'll kind of show you when I flip the punch. All right, so that's those two. And then crumb cake, I have to look at my punch here. Where did I put my punch? <laughs> uh, all right, so we're gonna do, I'm looking cause I'm gonna punch upside down so that I can put my stamped image sort of in the right direction to maximize my punch outs. Put one more here. All right, and ink always looks darker when you first stamp it and then it'll start to soften up a little bit. That crumb cake looks awfully dark, I can tell that, but it will soften up as it dries. All right, let's come in and let's do these guys first. So here's the difference with this punch. Normally with our builder punches or, or really any of our punches that coordinate with stamped images, you'd usually have a white border around your image. Now with this one, you actually have no border at all. So it gives you a little bit of sort of foolproofness. Let me show you. See how there's still ink left behind? I love this. This is something different for us. So there's one piece. I'm gonna come in and punch the other one here. I'm making sure that these other punch outs are not messing with my other stamped images and I think we did it right. I got those two pieces. You can come in with this guy. But again, you're gonna have a full image, which I love this. I'm just gonna make a confetti mess here and hope I can find all my pieces. All right, so we've got these two. You can also get cactus flowers out of this, but I'm gonna show you with one of my free gifts for this month, the um, flower, loose flower flourishes, I think is what they're called. They're really cute on these cacti. All right, then we'll come in and punch our little pots. Same thing with that. Oops, let's slide that in a little bit more. And I'm gonna have to take a pair of scissors. Just to get into this guy here. All right. We're gonna make our two cacti. 
ahead of time. We're going to save one for the box. But love this Cactus Builder punch. And the other great thing about the stamp set is you don't have to use the punch. Um, a lot of these other images are not don't coordinate with the punch. The punch works with this pot, this cactus, this cactus, okay? And then the rest of them are really easy to fussy cut because they're those solid images. You can have a lot of fun with this set. All right, let's get all my pieces and parts. And we're gonna bring in the silicone craft mat because I'm gonna be layering these pieces together and I might make a gluey, ooey gooey, ooey gluey mess here. So liquid glue, I'm gonna kind of build these um, in a little bit of a strategic order. Just gonna put a, a thin bead of glue at the bottom of the large cactus piece. And then we're gonna layer the pot just over the top. These are so fun to build. You could use different colors here, Sahara sand, even gray granite. Um, I was gonna say terracotta tile, but of course that has retired. Cajun craze would be a really cool kind of pot color. So just have fun with it. I know some of you already have this bundle and probably have had lots of fun with it. So we got those, oops. I was rushing too much. This is just so that the glue will go on the silicone craft mat and not on my desk mat here. And then I'll put a little bit of glue at the bottom of the small piece here. Cute. There's, they are cute. I can see why this is called Cactus Cuties. All right, so there's our two cacti. <laughs> Put those off to the side. And now with the, this piece is getting in my way here. All right, so I'm gonna layer the sentiment piece right over the top here. We're gonna use liquid glue for this guy. I don't want to go all the way to the edge. This is four and a quarter inches wide. So it's going to hang over or it goes to the edge of the basic white. We've got a, a, you know, that extra layer there with the texture. So layer that over the top there. Love that bold sentiment. And then we're going to use some dimensionals. And with the new dimensional sheet, I don't know how you guys do this, but I kind of start to tip the edge there to get those edges to pop up. And that's how I kind of get a new sheet started. So we're gonna do three of the big ones or the standard size dimensionals. And then one of the minis. And that's how I layered them on the back. Then we'll pop this up on the front here. Cutie patootie. And then here are the loose flower flourishes. They are loose. They don't have adhesive on the back of them. I'm going to grab one of the big fresh freesia ones. But how cute is that? They've got a little bit of texture to them. And I'm just going to grab a mini glue dot. Now I've got a ribbon tied around this so that this doesn't get unruly. And I've shared in weeks past, some of you may have gotten a batch of the mini glue dots that are um, wrapped the wrong way. So my tip for that is to unravel them and wrap them the right way. There was a batch of them that they put the glue dots on the wrong side. So we just put a glue dot on the back of that. I'm just using my hands here. And I know that's probably not anatomically correct, but I thought that was so cute. So that is our Cactus Cuties gatefold card. Quick and easy, really fun to make this and easy to make multiples. So that's tonight's card project. Why don't we jump into our little gift box. The extra 35 sticks pack. There's no like fun name for that pack of glue. I don't know what to call it. But this is what we're making tonight. It almost looks like a little bit of a clutch. And then this is what fits in there. Those big giant mega packs of, what is it? Over two packs of gum. Um, I think they sell big boxes of these at um, Costco, but I did find mine probably at Walmart or Target. Um, but just a cute little um, 
I don't know, it looks like a little clutch to me. I love it. But this would be just really cute to give to team members or friends as a little pick-me-up teachers. Guess what also fits in here? As I know you're gonna ask, you can put a gift card in here as well. Plenty of room for a gift card. I love how I have a Toys R Us, Babies R Us gift card left over still. So there we go. Let's go ahead and jump into this. I just love the way that this looks on the front. And you might be like, where did that sentiment come from? We're gonna make this sentiment. I'm gonna show you how. So. We are gonna start with a piece of fresh freesia. That's the color of the night tonight. And this piece measures seven and seven eighths by nine. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over because I can feel, I don't know if you've noticed, there's definitely a front and a back to our cardstock. <laughs> and I can usually tell based on which way it curves. I don't know if you can tell that. It's not gonna pick it up on the camera, but it's curving a little bit this way. So I consider that to be the front. It's probably the way Stampin' Up! cut this piece. Bringing in the Simply Scored. And of course, I didn't write my measurements down, so we will remember this on the fly. On the short side, so the seven and seven eighths inch side, we're gonna score this at seven eighths and one and three quarters from each side. So seven eighths, one and three quarters, rotate it, seven eighths and one and three quarters, okay? Now on the long side, you can turn it clockwise or counter counterclockwise, it doesn't matter. We're doing the same measurements on each side. We're gonna do two inches and two and seven eighths. Rotate at 180, two inches, two and seven eighths. I feel like it's been a while since I did a box with a template. I feel like I, I'm, I'm back to normal now. I'm just making a mess over here. All right, so here's the template. We're gonna make this really easy. I didn't add any tabs for you because we don't need them. Um, so I'm gonna come in with a bone folder and we're gonna go ahead and fold and burnish on all the score lines first. Got that done, I'm just gonna bring in my paper snips here and we're basically gonna remove the four sections in each of the four corners, okay? This is completely, well, it's landscape, but it's symmetrical top to bottom and symmetrical left to right. So I'm just gonna come in, I'm just cutting up right, this, right up the center of the score lines. So coming into and cutting up to, turn it a quarter of a turn and then come into and up to again. We're gonna remove that corner. Like so. Okay, and we're just gonna repeat that in all four corners. Brian's weekly reminder to Lily that it's time to stop reading and go to bed. <laughs> she's reading a new book right now, so she's having a hard time putting it down. All right, so we did that to all four corners and we got those pieces. You could maybe get some stuff out of it, but I don't typically save scraps like that. Then we're gonna bring in the detail trio punch, which is retiring. We're gonna use the corner rounder punch. It's really all I ever use this for. I did use the ribbon slot too, but I will miss this corner rounder. It's so fun to use with your the palm of your hand. We are just gonna round the top two corners here. Did she not hear you? Oh. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna fold this out of the way and we're gonna round these two corners. And it doesn't really matter. As long as you had this in portrait, so um, short side, long side. So portrait mode, you wanna round these two corners and these two corners. You don't have to, but I think it gives it a really nice finish when you do so. And then that'll look like our template here. 
I will, the plan is, I'll have a shortened video tutorial for you this week. I will have this blog post for the, this project will post on Friday's blog post. The card will post tomorrow. And I forgot to show you, I made a couple of other colors of that card. I'll show you that before we're done tonight. And then I've got two pieces of this really fun gingham paper. This comes from Pansy Petals. This is a fresh freesia pattern. And these measure one and three quarters by four and one eighth. On one of these, in landscape, we're gonna round the top two corners. Like so, okay? What were you doing? What's that? What were you answering? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I was just saying I have two cards to show, yeah. maybe. All right, so liquid glue. We are gonna glue the pattern paper down first. I love the little pansies on the back here. This will glue to the top section. We're on the outside of the box here. And then we're gonna adhere this one to the bottom. Ooh, you guys have great questions. All right, so the other thing we're gonna do is kind of tee up our adhesive, but I wanna show you a trick. This does have a Velcro closure. Now, if you wanted to, you could put the Velcro here, but I'm gonna show you a trick to get these lined up um, on the flap as well, just to give you options if you didn't wanna put a circle here on the front. And let's do the tear and tape first. On the back side of the section that doesn't have the rounded corners, and this may be overkill, but I'm gonna do two, I'm gonna bring in my little metal ruler because I like to tear it using this. I'm gonna go up to that first score line. And then I'm just gonna do two pieces right next to each other because we've got kind of a wide piece for it to adhere to. You could use liquid glue for this as well, but um, it's a little bit hard to figure out where to stop and where to start. You could use a credit card for that as well. I love this little ruler, it's on my favorites page. So we're doing it just on the back side here. I'm gonna wait to pull the backing off of that because let me show you how to do the Velcro dots. So I've got these on my favorites page as well. I've that's the link if you're new, thepaperpixie.com slash favorites. That's where I share all of my favorite crafty tools and organizational things, etc. Now, I love these Velcro thin clear fasteners. They're five-eighths of an inch circle, and they come with the hooks and the loops separated. But as soon as I get them, I sandwich together all the hooks and the loops. So all I need to do is just come and cut one off or as many as I need to use them. I would love to come up with a different storage solution for those as opposed to this box, but at least you can see what the package looks like. And I'm gonna take the, let's see, the hook side, which is the clear side. Sometimes it's hard to tell. And I'm gonna put that on the back side of this top flap. Now we don't have a lot of wiggle room here, so I'm gonna put this pretty darn close to that edge there, okay? And I can just pull the backing off of the loop side. And then I'm gonna fold up, whoops, let me take that off the screen. I'm gonna fold up from the second score line. I've got that pressed flat. I'm gonna fold down on the first score line, okay? So up from the second, down from the first, and press that into place. Now, we are using our score lines here to line up exactly where we want that Velcro dot to go. So now you can see that it's perfectly lined up on the bottom and lined up on the top. And so when it's closed and once we put it together, that's gonna be lined up right where we want it to go, okay? All right, so now it's time to put this together. Let me grab my take your pick tool. We'll pull off the backing. Gotta use a tool for this because those backings can be super finicky. And then what we're gonna do is lining up, I'm gonna kind of fold this over. 
I'm lining up that bottom. All right, let's focus, there we go. And then the edge here. Now I'm gonna do one side and then show you lining up on the edge along there see that then what we can do is put let's beg borrow or steal because I only have one pack of these gum sticks but I can slide this in now and that's gonna make this other side easier to put together I'll have some leverage on the inside again kind of lining up that corner and the edge and then pressing down in place okay now if you wanted to you could put you could have put Whoops, hopefully that didn't just mess my live stream. I dropped it on the, <laughs> on the keyboard. You could have put tabs here if you wanted to, but I wanted to save you a step there. So there is that. Look, it's cute the way it is now. If you wanted to, you could also put designer series paper here on the back. That would require four and an eighth by three, four and an eighth by three, okay? four and one eighth by three. And actually, let's just do that because I, I didn't even think about doing that on the back. Hopefully I've got, <laughs> there we go, four and one eighth by three. All right, hold your breath, see if it fits. Yay! <laughs> I got glue boogers in my bottle here. I think that might have been one of your questions here. We'll do that on the back. A little extra oomph there. All right. So, decorating the front here, we're gonna have some fun with the sentiment. I have got a circle cut from the Layering Circles dies, which let me tell you, thank you, this one. Um, well, I can measure it right here. The diameter of this one is two and five eighths. It's the two and five eighths inch circle from the Layering Circles dies. This circle comes from the beautiful shapes dies and it's the largest circle in the bunch. But I think you can see it's got those really cool um, sort of embossing texture there. So we're gonna layer those two on top of each other. Those layered down. I'm gonna actually layer this down now. So I'm gonna take uh, about halfway. I wanna make sure, so I did halfway, but we wanna make sure that we're also layering that over the flap here, like so. If you want to, you can go ahead and open that and that'll give you a flat surface to give you some leverage to press down. There's that. Gonna grab our little cactus, cutie. Gonna put this off to the side there. Looking at my other box, where is that? There we go. And then we'll pop the sentiment on in just a minute. We'll have some fun with that one. Grabbing another loose flower flourish in fresh freesia. go and then for the sentiment I was trying to come up with well I was trying to get hope your day is on point to fit and I couldn't so um, what's the necessity is the mother in, of invention is that the phrase so we're gonna create just a hello and I'm gonna show you we're gonna mask using the post-it tape so I'm gonna grab a little piece of that I've mounted just a note onto a clear block. So we're gonna go ahead and mask the word note. I'm just putting that over the word note, okay? 
need a scrap piece of basic white. Sorry, making a mess here. So fresh freesia, and here's the tip. When you do a mask like this, I'm gonna make sure that's good and inky, but then you've got to pull your mask off before you stamp or else you'll ruin your stamped image. So we've got just a, and then I'm gonna bring in hello. And what's great about our photopolymer is you can see exactly where you're stamping. Super cute, just a hello, okay. Gotta clean up a mess here. And then we're gonna use this die from the Beautiful Shapes dies. It also has that embossing on it as well, and I've got post-it tape to hold that into place. Should be a perfect fit for the sentiment. Now when we're die cutting, our sandwich is gonna be different than what we used before. So that's gonna be base plate one. The thin die adapter two, and then two number three cutting plates. I'm gonna run that through. I always feel like I'm a surgeon when I'm pulling my die cuts out. And then look how cute, just a hello. I did have to Google to see it. Do people say that? And there are some, I did see some projects where it's like, just a hello. I thought it was cute. <laughs> Dimensionals. <laughs> oh, you guys, I have such a small place that I work with, but stuff gets lost. How does that happen to us as crafters? Left at a Dell song, right? What's that? Oh. <laughs> Does, she doesn't say just a hello, does she? <laughs> That's not. Oh, gosh. And then we're just going to pop that pretty right in front here. And then we have got a cute coordinating pair of projects. Let's get some of my mess out of the way here. We've got our gatefold card in Fresh Freesia. And this really cute and fun gift box to hold one of the mega packs of extra gum. If y'all know if there's a fun name for that gum, let me know. Now let me show you a little bit of variation with different colors on this, because I love the in colors from last year. We've got one in polished pink and pale papaya. So those three colors are the three colors in the loose flower flourishes. These three cards will post to my blog tomorrow. This project will post to my blog on Friday with a shortened tutor tutorial and a picture of the template. Let's jump into your questions here. We jump back up here and cue you guys up here. Cue the cues, right? You guys are sweet, thank you. All right, let's see, let's go back to the top here. You got a question for me? No. Okay. All right, so starting from the top, we're gonna see some comments with cues in it because I wanted to make sure as we learn adding the, um, uh, the colon, um, just to get make sure we get through your questions. So hello, Johan. Hello, Nancy. Hello, Stacy. Does Brian work from home? Yes, Brian and I work together. So we actually met at Ernst & Young, gosh, 20 years ago, right? It's 20 years this year. Um, we will be married 15 this year, this August. So yeah, we work together a lot. We still like each other. <laughs> um, but yeah, we work together. We are doing uh, the paper pixie business together. So yes. Uh, let's see. Maria, I think you're asking about your, we talked about this briefly, but I think you're asking about your product share and I'm 99.9% .9 sure you are on the list, but I will double check the basic. So she missed us. So I asked you when you were doing it and she was typing and she said, you need to read all the measurements. Cindy. Oh, got it. So Cindy, um, <clears throat> the basic white for the, um, gatefold card is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. Okay. So three and a quarter by four and a quarter for the basic white. The colored panel that layers on top of that is three by four. Do the older 3D embossing folders work in the cut and emboss machine? What is the sandwich recipe? Yes. 
So here is my best tip for the 3D embossing folder. So um, Stampin' Up! used to carry Sizzix brand 3D embossing folders. Those used to be thicker. So the difference and what you wanna look for, if it's a Sizzix 3D embossing folder, it's obviously gonna be a thick embossing folder, but it's also gonna have the word Sizzix on it. So if your 3D embossing folder says Sizzix, you don't want, let's see if I can explain this. You don't wanna use the four plate, which is the thick gray one. You actually are going to use the three plate instead. So if you have the Sizzix 3D embossing folders, don't use the four, use the three. My beautiful, well-cut <laughs> embossing folder. So the current 3D is one and four. The Sizzix 3D is one and three. Hopefully that makes sense, okay? Yeah. Yep, got it. All right, so hopefully that answered your question. Um, and Faye, yes, great follow-up question here. If you have the old blue plate, you do not need plate four. That is correct. Now, the gray plate four does come with the stamp and cut and emboss machine, but if you already have a machine, the blue plate will work. It's the same thickness as the gray, okay? Does Lily send her paper pumpkin cards? She does. She, she usually will write them uh, or she'll bring them with her to Girl Scouts or she'll take them with her to school. Um, she had a, her, her best friend at school had a birthday last week and she's like, can I take a card for her birthday? I'm like, of course you can. So yeah, she does love to send her cards. Um, oh, good question. Do you see the, the back half of Lynn's question? Brian, will you create or stamp for us on a Wednesday night? We've been talking about it. So I'm not promising anything, but I think it would be a lot of fun, don't you think? Wink, wink. <laughs> uh, Maria, do you miss your job? You know what? I miss the people I worked with. Absolutely. I miss the people. I do. I mean, I loved my job, but I am having so much fun with my Stampin' Up! business. So it's a, it's a difficult question to answer. Um, I am grateful for the 21 years that I had. I had an incredible experience. So yes, I do miss it a little bit, but I love what I'm doing. So let's see. Okay. Does the card have to be off center? It does not, Tina. <laughs> um, so you would actually want to do um, two and three quarters. Okay, so if you don't want the gatefold to be off center, um, you wanna do two and three quarters from each end. Hopefully I'm doing that right. Five and a half divided by two is two and three quarters. Yes, so two and three quarters from each end that will get your gatefold going right down the center. Totally get it. <laughs> um, yes, Nalita, I see your question. If it's kind of blurry at times, that is usually on your end. Um, let's see. What do you have on your Stamparatus magnets? It is duct tape, decorative duct tape. <laughs> I found it on Amazon. I think it's a mermaid scales pattern. Um, I used to put washi tape on my Stamparatus magnets, but that ends up tearing when you're picking up the magnets. But I put the duct tape on it for two reasons. Let me show you what that looks like. This is what Helen is asking about. I put duct tape on my so it's one, a handle, and two, just in case I bang these magnets together, it sort of reduces the chances of them shattering. So if you have the Stamparatus, whatever you do, do not put those magnets together because they will shatter. They're rare earth magnets. Um, so I put the tape on twofold. So I got a little handle to pick it up easy <coughs> and then to sort of prevent shattering. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that that would definitely prevent it though. What am I? Okay, that was that question. Oh, I've got those are both the same. Using the wrap around your magnet, yes. Yep, Stamparatus is the savior when you've got issues with stamping for sure. My first full week, my my first week of full time stamping, Ava. This is actually week two, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess last week was my first full week. Um, I, I haven't stamped as much as I would like to, but we're working on getting more time for me to do that. So lots of doing some behind the scenes strategy stuff, which is always fun for us to kind of brainstorm together. But um, it's funny, I've been, as many of you know, doing the Stampin' Up! and working full time, I was kind of working crazy hours. It's hard for me to stop working those hours. So I'm trying to figure out, 
it's just weird. You get into habit, right? Um, I've already found the mini dimensionals. Oh, the mini dimensionals to not be as thick as the standard. I have not found it. I have not experienced that, Carla. I do know there is a slight difference between the paper pumpkin dimensionals and the, and the normal dimensionals that we purchase. Um, but I haven't noticed that. That's interesting. Does a pack of Kleenex fit? Um, I don't know the answer to that. I would need somebody to give me the dimensions. I don't have, um, I don't have a pack of Kleenex. I'm thinking, so let me tell you what the finished dimensions are. Three and a quarter by four and three eight. I'm covering the mic, aren't I? Three and a quarter, four and three eighths by seven eighths. I think a pack of Kleenex is thicker than seven eighths. So you would need to tweak that. And Kleenex might be taller, but I'm not sure off the top of my head. Let's see. She is reading, oh boy, what's the name of it? Um, it's a Rick Riordan series. Rick Riordan, I think, is the author right now. He's got a bunch of different series. So she's, been, she's read a few of his series. Rick Riordan, I hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. And for Easter, she got the Dragon Prophecy. Oh my gosh, my brain. I can't remember. If I remember, I will write that down for next week. Yes, the new in colors, all five of them have Stampin' Blends combo packs, which is fantastic. They're beautiful. Let's see. Will there be a substitute for the corner rounder? Um, there is not one in the annual catalog, so I'm not sure if there's one coming in a mini. I do not know. Um, I hope so, because I'm going to miss having a corner rounder. I have one, but it's not a Stampin' Up! one, so. Do I ever have trouble with the liquid glue drying out over time and the card you made several months ago falls apart? I have never experienced that, Judy. One of the things, one of the other reasons why I use liquid glue is because here in Georgia, I found if I used, well, it was the old snail um, tape runner, my cards would fall apart with that, I think because of the humidity here, but I haven't experienced, now it might be... Um, uh, climate based, you may be in a dry climate that might affect your liquid glue. I know that, that climates can affect adhesives sometimes. So I haven't experienced that in Georgia though. Do you find the DSP you want to use first or the cardstock and then the DSP to match it? Usually I will do, I get my color inspiration from the designer series paper first. Tonight I actually my inspiration came from the loose flower flourishes. I had this idea in my mind to use those on the cactus cuties. And then from there it was like, okay, we'll use either fresh freesia or pale papaya or polished pink. But normally my inspiration, I start with the designer series paper and get color combinations from there first. Is the postage fee when you sign up to be a demonstrator or do you need to do it tomorrow? No, so anytime you purchase the starter kit, it's always free shipping on the starter kit. Debbie, that's a great question. So um, starter kit is always free shipping, which is one of the best discounts added onto it because our shipping now is at 11%. And, um, but great question. So yeah, it doesn't have to be tomorrow. Passport holders. Oh, I think you're saying for the um, Velcro dots. Yes, and some people said the <laughs> the glue or the gum holder yeah. would be perfect for that. So, hmm, I may make my kids chew the gum really fast. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, what other items, what other item ideas do you have for putting in the box besides gum? Um, well, I'm trying to think, I'm racking my brain to think what else could fit in here. Um, you could probably put, I don't think an ink pad would fit. That would be weird, although I have done an ink pad box. Nope, too small for a ink pad. Um, whew, good question. I know some of you who can't wait to make this. Some of you can't even wait till Friday's blog post, but you may find other things to fit in here. Usually I try to create boxes specifically for items so that I have something for you to put in it, but um, I'm just sure you could put, I don't know, a pretty scarf or you could make a masculine box and probably put a man's tie in it. Um, I'm going to have to noodle on that. And if you guys have any ideas, drop them in the comments. <laughs> oh, dimensions of the box. I'll repeat that one more time. Um, three and a quarter tall, four and three eighths wide, and seven eighths inch 
<coughs> deep, excuse me, I have a tickle in my throat, is the glue bottle refillable. Let me grab water. Hold on one second. <coughs> it can be refillable. Um, you can screw off the green lid. I'm not sure if Tombow has... A big glue bottle. I know that I think they do have some bigger sizes than this, but I don't know. But yes, you can put more glue in here for sure. A lot of people will combine, like I should do that because I've got used glue bottles everywhere, but you could combine a few of them into one. Let's see. <laughs> well, you have glue everywhere? I do, yeah. Brian's making fun of me. You need a glue bottle? Just look on my table. Look for the green. You'll find one. There's one for every... He's putting up the number five. I've got five glue bottles in sight right now. Am I really going to be able to get rid of your corner punch? Oh, PJ, I don't know. I probably will, to be honest. But because um, I've got another corner rounder, I don't know yet. Undecided. <laughs> have I mailed the catalogs? I have, Raquel. Um... You should have gotten a tracking notification, but I'll check on yours if you help me remember that to look at Raquel's tracking number. Will the layering dies be carried over into the new catalog? The layering circles will, yes. Uh, and the stylish shapes, the other one that I used today as well. They both will be. Do I ever use the mini? I do, Cynthia. I normally, um, I don't know, I use the big one just while I'm in my craft room. Um, cause it's heftier. I just feel like it, I mean, the mini is really meant for, um, kind of a grab and go and especially for kind of crafting on the go. I usually grab the big one more often, but I do use the little one as well. I am using Ecamm, Diane, Ecamm Live. I used to use StreamYard. Now we're on Ecamm Live. It gives me a lot more flexibility with, um, what I can do with scenes. Mitzi, of course you can case my projects. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, let's see. You can't currently buy the Sizz. I think you're talking about Sizzix. Um, I don't know if you're talking about the Sizzix plates or, but let me know, Deanne, if I get, if I got, so I can understand your question. Um, do I have a tutorial on using magnets to close boxes? Not specifically just on magnets. Um, typically I give that part of the tutorial included with the box that I use the magnets on. So I've got quite a few of those, but, um, I don't have one specifically just for magnets. Did Brian cook for Easter? He did cook for Easter. We had shrimp quesadillas, right? Or do we have pizza? I think we had barbecue chicken pizza with homemade ranch dressing to dip it in. I think that's what we had for Easter. It was yummy. We didn't do anything fancy though. Papa Pixie's here. He's watching from YouTube. So he's not in the comments like he, as much as he was on Facebook, but he's here. He tunes in every Wednesday night and he's actually, I think, coming to visit next week unless his plans have changed. So maybe we'll have a cameo with Papa Pixie next Wednesday. No promises because I'm not sure, but just heads up. <laughs> Did I teach my children how to blow gum bubbles? I have not yet, Nicole. <laughs> well, Lily um, just got her braces off in the last, what, six weeks. So she hasn't had gum for a while. Um, but I may need to do that. Well, this isn't really bubble gum, the extra gum. But um, funny story, Lily, right after, wait. She chewed gum while she had braces on. And I think I told the story when it happened. And her tooth, she had a loose molar because she's losing like all of her molars at this point. And um, the gum pulled the tooth out and the tooth was still attached, had a brace on it and it was still attached to the wire. So she had this molar <laughs> flapping in her mouth because she chewed gum. We're like, hmm, I wonder why that happened. <laughs> Will two Ghirardelli squares fit side by side? Yes, because Ghirardelli squares are, those are the bunnies, but there should be, I know there's at least one square in there. I'm pretty sure the Ghirardelli, in the bag, um, the white bag, I'm pretty sure the Ghirardelli squares are two inches wide. So yeah, you can put two next to them. There's one. Maybe a green one in there. 
Yeah, absolutely. If you fold the wrapper out of the way, you can get, whoops, I'm not even showing you. If you fold the wrapper out of the way, yes, you can get two in there. Okay. Let's see. Will you do another tutorial explainer on how we can measure an item? Oh, am I, there we go. On how we can measure an item to help us make our own unique size boxes. Okay, so Mary, I've gotten this question a lot and here's the challenge with giving uh, one tutorial on how to make boxes. All of the boxes that I create all go together a little bit differently. So sort of the formulas for those are all different. So it's really hard to put that into a tutorial um, to try to cover all the different ways that boxes can be created and how I figure out measurements. Um, but I am considering doing like a basic box, how to figure out your measurements for that. Um, so um, keep an eye out for that. Let's see. Uh, Maria, can you come see me when you come to Ohio? I'm only 45 minutes from you. Are you 45 minutes from Chagrin Falls, I think, Maria? Let me know. I don't know when we're going to get back up to Ohio, but yeah, I'll let you know. Will the mini cards fit in the box? Um, like the three by threes, Laura? Yes, three by threes will definitely fit. I wanted to make sure the envelopes would fit as well. Ooh, yeah, the envelopes will fit as well. Hold on, let me come back to my overhead camera here. So yeah, you can fit mini cards. It's a little wide, but um, you could adjust the width measurements for sure, and this could be a box for mini cards. It actually would be a really great fit for the envelopes and cards. You would just wanna probably adjust, you wouldn't have to, but if you wanted to adjust the width for that. Great question. All right, do we have any other questions in the queue? I don't think I see any more. Um, you guys are awesome. Let's come back here. Um, thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you got some tips or tricks and enjoyed tonight, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and like the video. If you're watching on Facebook, like the video and click follow so you'll be notified when I'm live next. We will be live next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for episode 237. Don't forget, free shipping on orders of $75 or more tomorrow only, April 21st. Make sure to take advantage of that. Stampin' Up! doesn't give, do free shipping very often. And as always, um, I've got my paper shares or my product shares and In Color Club. You can find all of that information on my blog. If you have any questions, reach out. And I will see you next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for Live with the Paper Pixie episode 237. Have a wonderful and blessed week. Those of you that got snow the last week, please stay warm. Take good care and I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye.